All right, guys, welcome to video two. And we're back. We are indeed back. Now in this video, we're gonna go over the basic operations of the CNC table. Uh, we're gonna go over some common settings. We're gonna show you uh, a first cut. We're gonna cut a panel uh, of steel here. This is a 16 gauge. We're gonna cut this and do one of the presets that are already in the shape library on the machine. So just a nice simple bracket. Yep, yeah, just a little bracket. And as soon as you turn this machine on, and everything's hooked up, you can cut this bracket. and It'll be your first cut, which is fantastic. Because once you get satisfying. a once you get a first cut that works, it's like, we're invincible, we can do this. <laughs> and then you start messing with scaling and stuff, and then you realize you're an idiot. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> going to school all over again. <laughs> um, but so we're going to uh, just kind of dive into it. We're going to get back here on this machine. We're going to just start talking about some of the uh, adjustments and some of the uh, things that we can change on it to get a successful cut. So cool. we're gonna rearrange a little bit of cameras here and go back over here. Let's do it. All right, so once you have your machine put together, what you wanna do is get your plasma table, uh, your plasma cutter set up near the table. I got one of these rolly carts and it works great. I just was able to put it on there and I can move it around as I see fit. Um, put your ground cable in, your lead cable, then we ran our air back here. So we just need to hook up the air. So we have the ability to cut. And we're gonna power that up. We're gonna let that warm up for a minute. We've got our panel on the bed and we got our ground cable hooked up in the back. You always want your ground cable and a good connection directly to your cutting piece. Um, I know some people will clip it onto these rails. It'll definitely cut that way, but you can get some, this is called static, you know, ground issues where it might lose connection or not have as good of a connection to get a good arc through the panel. Um, so we've got our setup ready to do the first cut. Once your machine is on, you go into your shape library. This is your shape library. Everything that is pre-programmed is right here. Um, you have about 50 uh, preloaded shapes that are really great. That one looks fun. Yeah, that one looks perplexing. I don't know if I want to try that yet. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I'm not ready for I that one. I don't think it's ready for us. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is a tab. So. The tabs down here are really, really useful. And I think just about everyone in the world of automotive fab has used these tabs. These can be some of the most profitable things that you can make with this machine. Um, over here, you can set all your sizes. Uh, each one is correlated to one of these dimensions and that map is down here. So. We're gonna leave this set the way it is. We're just gonna hit okay. So right now, <laughs> right now it is 20 inches by 16 inches. Now, I don't know who's making a tab that big, maybe for like a bucket truck or something. A bridge. Yeah, a bridge. So- I don't think <laughs> the material is correct for that. Yeah, we, we're gonna need a whole lot more. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into part option and there's a scale right here. This is fantastic. I like using this. So I'm going to scale it at 0.5% and hit okay. So that's 10 inches. That's still too much for me. So let's go to scale again. Let's go 0.25, a quarter scale. Now that's a five inch wide bracket. That's still a little high, but it's probably sure. good, it's good, good for, for this. Demonstration purposes. Yeah, good for this, this demo. Now, while you're running this machine, you can Use these manual access and get your cut head where you want it to be. So I would like it to cut as far down this panel as we can get it. And I'm thinking somewhere around there. Bottom left corner is going to be good. So right here, if you hit manual move, there's a button that's called frame. I absolutely love using this frame because when you hit that frame button, it's going to do a perfect outline of that shape. And it's gonna tell you exactly the perimeter 
as a box what it's gonna take. So it just finished, I'm like, okay, I'm not quite over to the edge enough. So I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna hit frame again, and it's gonna frame out my piece. And based on that, I know I'm about as far to the edge as I can get. And I'm gonna have Andy hit that button for me one more time. So when he hits frame, you'll see this will make a perfect box around my shape. So I know it's not gonna be any further out of that box and that's a really good position there. And also on the unit itself, it shows you a travel path while it's going and where it's been. So that red line wasn't there before all the way around. Yep. But if you watch it while it's going, it'll keep telling you where it's been, which is kind of nice. That is nice. You can, you can really work out the positioning of your piece based off of that mapping. Now they have more advanced pieces in here where you can actually have it go through every cut path so you can watch it work, but that takes a while. It eats up a lot of time and in a production standpoint where we're trying to make as many pieces as possible to make a profit. I just need to know that it's gonna fit on the piece and that's it. I don't really care about the intricate little things. So, um, and he's gonna reposition this. Yeah, he's just playing with the button so he can make sure that it's where he wants it to be. So run the frame one more time. Just kind of hoping that we'll be able to get two side by side if we needed to. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now that's set up. Now we gotta set We've got that. Zero point, right? Or no, it's, it's good exactly where it's at because it's going to okay. automatically put your zero point here. Okay. Um, so that point there, it's going to tell you that's where it's going to start and that's where it's going to end. Okay. Um, you can move that zero point throughout this wherever you wish. Um, one of the things is called lead in. If you look very closely there, you see that little hook. That means that the plasma cutter is going to start inside the circle to get the cut and then it's going to end inside the circle. So that's lead in and lead out. You can adjust those sizes depending on your type of material and how thick it is and what size your, your cut itself is. Um, but from factory, you don't really have to worry about any of that. Um, you're going to get this. This is a, a whole instructional manual on how to do every setting in this thing. But this cut speed reference table is what you really want to focus on. Once you have your gauge of material that you're working with, this tells you the only settings you need to worry about. Your cut speed and your pierce time. Ours are already set for 16 gauge, so we're ready to start cutting. But if yours are not ready, um, just adjust those few settings as they describe in that instruction manual. And as long as it matches up, you're gonna cut perfectly fine. Uh, one other thing to make sure is that this plane of this cutter is uh, 90 degrees to the surface. You wanna make sure it's nice and even all the way up. I know I don't have my cover plate on here. Um, I removed it when I was doing my installation um, just because I was curious what all this looked like. Um, so don't do that. Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. I like to see how things work. That's just me. But okay, so checklist. Settings are good. Sure. Check. I trust you. Ground clamp is on. It is. Check. Piece has been mapped. We know it's going to fit. Check. Plasma cutter's on. Plasma cutter's on. Air it's supply. On. Air supply. We is, check that. Air supply is on and hooked up. Okay. Um, I think that's it for first checks. Um, you can get some cheap. Uh, glasses like these to protect your eyes when the cutters are going on. Um, or just don't look at it. Or just don't look at the arc. It's up to you. I prefer just to not look at it. So, um, so when you're ready and your cut is a go, you just hit the green button and tell it to go. Can I hit the green button? Absolutely. I'm hitting the green button. Are you sure? Yes. Green. And enter. Is that this one? Yes, sir. There it goes. Things are happening, Dan.
I got a splat on my lens. Oh no. It got wet. So now, while that cools, we're just gonna move it to the back so we have a piece. And this is going to be hot. Do not make the mistake of thinking it's going to be cool. I've made that mistake. And then we have very minimal slag on the back that you have to clean up. But I mean, that is a very clean, clean cut. And dunk it in the cooling fluid a little bit. There we go. So that is a first successful cut. So just in a couple minutes with us even talking through it, we were able to get a perfectly cut bracket. Now this bracket ideally can be used for an automotive tab to weld onto something to add a hole, but you can use it for just about anything. Um, and as long as your files are good and your dimensions are good and your settings are set, you can cut these in minutes. Yeah. And especially if you were batching them. Yeah. If you were able to, uh, if you needed a whole bunch of these, lay them out on a sheet, you can tell this machine to batch and you can tell them how many rows over, how many rows up, and it just lays it out on the, on the table for you. And it just, you hit go and it will just spend the next 20 minutes just cutting out, you know, 30, 40 of these. So that's a real time saver. One of the things to pay attention to is safety concerns. This thing's gonna throw off a lot of sparks. And you're in a home garage. Yeah, I'm in a home garage. I'm sure our viewers are probably gonna be in a home garage or some type of space that's maybe a little bit smaller. Those sparks are gonna catch if they hit something that's flammable. So make sure that you have some type of fire safety around, whether it's a fire extinguisher, a fire blanket, or both. You, maybe both, yeah. <laughs> um, I've ordered a couple uh, welding, uh, welding cards that you can put like around uh, a welding room and it just stops the flash and it also stops sparks from going anywhere. Um, so that's really important. Um, you wanna make sure that your cables, your, your power cords and stuff like that, because there is water in this thing. You wanna make sure your power cables are grounded and that they are not getting wet by this shooting some water out of the table as it's cutting, because it is uh, shooting a lot of PSI of air through that into the water. So water's gonna get displaced. Yeah, it's not a clean operation. It is very much not a clean operation. So just, just keep that in mind. And as quick of a cut as we did, there is a good amount of smoke lingering in this room. So you wanna make sure you have good ventilation um, and that you have fire safety in place because those are two of the biggest safety concerns with this machine. Uh, it's minimal, but they are there. We did it. Yep, so that's-, that's First cut, man. Yeah, that's, that's it for the first cut video and the basic setup on this machine. Now there are tons of settings in this machine. We could spend hours going into it, but that's not what this video is about. This video is quick to the point and trying to get you through your first cut. So good settings, good file, good cut. That's all you need to know.